Hi everyone, welcome back to another card making video featuring the Jar of Love stem set. I know I haven't been uploading regularly for the past few weeks since I was moving, but now that I'm all settled, I'll be able to share card making ideas with you once again. I still have a few projects left over from last month. After that, we will begin to focus on April's theme, which is alphabet and numbers dice, so stay tuned for that. For today's card, I decided to try something that I've never done before. You probably saw that it's a light up card in the thumbnail already. I'm going to use the LED lights from Chibitronics, but before that, we need to create the nice sky scene first. I die cut three firefly shapes from post it tape. It's like the sticky notes that you're all familiar with, except the entire tape is backed with a sticky material. We are going to use these stickies to mask off areas that we want to stamp our fireflies later. After pressing them down, we can start ink blending colors. I'm mainly using Distress Oxide inks today. I find that they're a little more forgiving because even if you leave streak marks, you can easily blend them out since the inks stay wet on the surface longer. I would say that the colors are not as vibrant and saturated as compared to Distress inks. That's probably because these two types of inks are formulated very differently. And the Distress Oxide inks you get a more velvety look that kind of resembles a matte finish. You can see that I'm layering and building up the ink as I go. I don't have a plan on which colors to use. They're all just spontaneous, so it's going to take me a while to finish this ink background. I'll speed up the video and catch you guys when I'm done. Enjoy the process!
After I finish ink blending the background, I'm going to spritz some water with my hand to create the oxide look. Then for a second layer of texture, I'm going to flick down white paint droplets. I squeeze a little acrylic paint on my clear block, thin it down with some water and flick it from the edge with a paintbrush. If you didn't like the bigger drops, you can simply soak them up with a paper towel. When the paint is completely dried, I'm going to peel off the firefly masks and stamp the fireflies with VersaFine Onyx Black ink. I'm also heat embossing the images, so I always remember to use my anti-static powder tool before I stamp. By the way, I ended up using four kinds of embossing powders for this project. That's kind of rare, so I'm treating it as a bonus technique in this video. I like to clear heat emboss the stamped images when I'm going to watercolor them because the raised outlines always help prevent the water and ink from seeping outside. I'm doing very simple coloring today with my Zig Clean Color Wheel Brush pens. If you are interested in the colors and inks I use for this project, be sure to check out more info in the description box below. Next, I'm going to heat emboss a tall jar with silver embossing powder. I originally wanted to white heat emboss it, but after all of the white speckles, I thought silver is a better fit. I'm also going to double heat emboss the image so I get a really nice and dimensional result. It's really easy to double stamp in the exact position by using a stamping tool. Here you can see that the lines are so crisp and thin after stamping twice. I thought about cutting out the clips where I'm just heat embossing things, but I honestly think nobody will ever get bored from looking at them. I don't know, but it's just so soothing to watch the powder melt. It's like crafting ASMR. Anyways, I double heat embossed the jar cap as well, but instead of using silver, I used gold. Then I'm simply die cutting the images with their coordinating dies. I also die cut the jar with plain Nina Solar White cardstock, and I'm placing it right on top of the distressed one. Here's a little trick. Now we need to mark the tails of the fireflies so later on, we'll know where to put the LED lights. I'm using the flashlight from an older phone to help me see through the cardstock. However, you may also try laying the die cuts against a bright window. Before we move on to set up the circuits, we need to make sure that the surface is leveled. So I'm adhering the distress panel and the white jar to a shimmery blue cardstock. The Chibitronics kit you see here is what makes the magic happen. I'm starting off by making the battery holder with a scrap piece of lighter weight paper. The reason why you would want to use a lighter weight paper is because you want to reduce bulk, especially since we are using quite a bit of foam tape later. After securing the bottom flap with double-sided tape, I'm cutting the copper tape into half so it's easier to work with. My first attempt actually failed because I couldn't make good corners when I was trying to turn the tape. So in the end, only the bottom right LED lit up. 
but I thought I'd still include my first try here to show that it's okay if things don't work out the first time. Actually, when I craft, there's a handful of times where things don't go according to plans. However, you learn from each experience, and a lot of the times you'll discover beautiful things by accident. And that's just a part of crafting. Anyhow, I finally accepted the truth that it's not going to work, so I turned off the copper tape and tried again. I think I did a much better job the second time around. Here's a tip. When you want to make a turn, first gently fold the tape backwards, then use your nail to hold down the end diagonally. And finally, pull the rest of the tape towards the direction of the turn. This way you'll make a much sharper corner, and the path will still be conductive. After the circuit is completed, you can stick on the LED lights and test if they work when you push on the battery. Another troubleshooting tip is to make sure that the little holes on the LED lights are showing the copper color. For my second light, I noticed that white was showing through the top two holes, so I stuck a little piece of copper tape beneath the original circuit and that fixed the problem. Then I'm adhering thin strips of foam tape around the battery to hold it in place. I did double up the foam tape so that it will be higher than the battery. This way the LED lights will only light up when you push down intentionally. Otherwise, one end of the copper tape will be suspended and you won't waste the battery life. For security, you could also include a little piece of lightweight cardstock. When this strip of paper is left inserted, it will block the contact between the tape and the battery, even when it's being pushed down. So the car won't light up when it's being sent through the mail. Then I mounted the jar on two layers of foam tape and white heat embossed the sentiment on black shimmer cardstock. Finally, I assemble all the elements, added some embellishing details, and my first light up card is completed! Thank you so much for watching the entire video. I hope this tutorial has inspired you in some way. Before I go, I'd like to give Wendy some credit because I was heavily inspired by her creation. You can see that I've cased her layout, but we made different kinds of interactive cards. If you'd like to watch how she created her gorgeous shaker card, you can click on the link in the description box. Thanks again for stopping by and I'll see you soon!